What's up, guys? This is Nina Perez, and this is Straight Talk, No Sugar Added. Thank you so much for being here. You know I go around the planet trying to find the best humans on it to come on here to grow, challenge, and transform your thinking. I think I found one for you guys today. Her name is Leslie Davis, and she's a six-time author, and her first book, You Can't Eat Love, I love that title. <laughs> Learning how to love yourself can change your relationship with food is in the Amazon top 20 in at least two categories since that release uh, in January. So like so many, um, it took a moment of extreme sadness for Leslie to realize something had to change. And, you know, you guys know that every time I come on here, I try to talk as real as I can. And we try to talk about real topics because I know that you guys are super interested and my guests and what we talk about here because we talk about real life stuff and this is real life stuff. So Leslie, thank you so much for being on here. How are you today? I'm doing really well, Nina, and I am so excited to get to talk to you because, um, you know, the, the straight talk, I get to do that really often. However, with no sugar added, oh my gosh, that means that we can be real, we can yeah. be raw, and we can be so honest. And I really, really appreciate that. Oh, thanks. I love that you love my name. It's it's something that I, all my life, I was always said, oh, you know, Nina, you, maybe you shouldn't say it that way or, or you shouldn't. And I'm just such a real talker, Leslie. It's really been difficult for me to navigate that, right? But I have learned though, how to say things in a way that is still direct, but maybe not so hurtful because I'm just somebody who wants to just say it and get it over with and let's, let's go, let's move on to the next thing. And so, but I am a no sugar added type of girl, you know? Well, um, well let me just say this about that. <clears throat> One of the things that I learned on the journey that I went on um, was that I'm only in control of me and everyone else is in control of them. Okay. That's good. So if, if I'm being honest with regard to what I'm saying, and if I'm being honest with regard to how I'm feeling, then how anybody else reacts or anything else is on them. They've I'm got good. a choice just as I had the choice on how I choose to pick up whatever it is they're laying down, mm -hmm. on how I choose to react or choose to feel. So um, I would say to you, you know, be be authentically you. Yeah. And do not worry or concern yourself with regard to the other person's reaction. Mm -hmm. Because I talk about this over and over and over again in the book. Um, you can only do something about you. And no one can make you anything except reservations for dinner. <laughs> I love that. And that is so true. And I've, you know, that's, it's, it's, thank you for saying that first off. And I agree a thousand percent. Um, and I've had to, you know, had this conversation with, with other women, especially because women tend to pull back a lot. You know, they, they tend to be careful about what they say and how they say things. They don't really speak up for themselves, um, you know, that kind of stuff. And I deal with a lot of, you know, CEOs and stuff like that, that I'm working with right now with coaching. And I realized that even with their titles and everything, they still struggle with, with that. Right. So, I mean, you already went in. So you already went in, Leslie. You already told us you're a straight talker. That's what you are. I love it. I love your book. The title of the book is amazing. I love that title, by the way, because, I mean, you can't eat love, right? And so the thing is, is that's what most of us do. That's what most of us do, right? We, we eat to feel loved. And I'm not, I'm not sure if that's where you're going with your title, but that's that's what I got out of that. So tell us a little bit about you can't eat love. Well, <clears throat> the the title came from several years ago, uh, right around Mother's Day. And the first three paragraphs, three or four paragraphs in the book are the result of what happened several years ago. Mm. Um, I was, uh, our, our mother died. Now it's been 38 years. And I never really mourned her death because two weeks after she died, my oldest child, her first grandchild was born. Um, mm -hmm. so I always struggle with mother's day. Anyway, one of my sisters commented that she would always make this, uh, family heirloom chocolate meringue pie for mother's day. And I said, well, maybe I'll do that one time. And so I did. And on the day after mother's day, I sat down with this piece of pie and I was eating it. And 
what a lot of people don't know because I don't tell them is um, at the point in time where I had this pie, I had already lost almost a hundred pounds. I had done the hard work. I had learned to love myself, but I didn't put all the pieces together until mm. I was sitting there eating that pie. And I grabbed pen and paper and wrote down, you know, how I felt as I was eating that pie. And it was at that moment that I realized what I had been doing was trying to fill what I call a myself sized hole in my heart. Wow. Because I thought that nobody loved me. But the truth was the only person who didn't love me was me. Wow. That's and that's powerful. where the myself sized hole in my heart came from. And I had been filling it with food mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because, um, Food, I came to understand, to realize, to recognize, and to accept was my drug of choice. It was what I ran to, to stop the pain of feeling. Yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, you were just saying that uh, you were told when you were much younger that, you know, you need to speak more kindly, less direct, whatever. Um, we, we learn how to speak to ourselves when we're very young. Right. And when we speak to ourselves in unkind ways, well, that that sits off a whole train of thoughts and emotions. But let's go back even further. How many times did you fall down and you would be crying and somebody would tell you, well, that doesn't hurt? Mm -hmm. Or how many times would you try and tell someone that you felt sad because of whatever was going on? And they said, well, you shouldn't feel sad. Right. Right. How many times were you angry or mad about something and you would tell someone and they would say, well, you shouldn't feel that way. Mm -hmm. A okay. lot, actually. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. So what that does is it creates this internal tension because we are experiencing a genuine human emotion. Right. And then someone that we know, like, and trust is telling us you shouldn't be feeling that way. So you're like, wait a minute. Okay. I'm feeling this, but I shouldn't be feeling it. So mm -hmm. now what do I do with this? So it sets off this tug of war and we have to do something with the tension. And so many times, mm -hmm. where do we run, but to something that's easily accessible, yeah. readily available. And not only that, but how many times did an adult in your family and your presence hand some food to you to make you feel better? Feel better. Yeah, a hundred percent. And we circle back around to no one can make you anything except reservations for dinner. Right. Right. It's, but a, it's a choice. It's a choice. It is. So, but, but what, what made you get that? What made you have that choice, Leslie? So can, can I ask you what your heaviest was? Or do you share that? Like what's your heaviest? Well, uh, my heaviest weight was about a hundred pounds more than I am right now. Okay. Okay. So you lost a hundred pounds and you've kept it off. Kept it off. What was that? What was that moment? What was that moment for you? Because I think, I think a lot of us, me, you know, me included, right? I work out all the time. I'm trying to lose weight and all that kind of stuff. And, and what's that moment for you, Leslie? Because I'm sure that probably wasn't your first time trying, oh, right? No, no. Right? Because most of us <laughs> who struggle with weight and self-sabotaging behaviors and trying to get through it, it's, it's, it takes a, a lot of times until that one time that you actually get it, right? So what was that time for you? I really want to know that. Well, the time was my father had died. This was in 2015. My father had died. So as I mentioned, I hadn't dealt with the loss of my mother. Right. You know, people can say, how can you not have dealt with the death that happened 30 years prior? Well, it, it does happen. Yeah, of course. Um, gr grief is a very hard thing. Mm -hmm. um, and also, I will say to your listeners, if anybody is going through any kind of grief, it doesn't go away. Right. It's not a one and done. It's not right. three days later, you're going to feel better. Okay. Grief is grief and it keeps on going. Anyway, my father had died. So that brought up, you know, the fact that I hadn't dealt with my mother's death. I still was grieving and it would come out sideways. But then during that same time, my oldest son and his wife were about to have a baby and they decided they did not want me to be part of their life. So what happened was I was thrown into what I call a wash, rinse, repeat. Because here my mother had died. Two weeks later, my child is born. And, you know, the, the grief, the overwhelming mm -hmm. grief. So I was thrown back into that. And I came up for air. I, I 
tell people that I won't say I was at rock bottom because I don't want to tempt God or the fates in saying, you think that was rock bottom? I'll show right, you right, rock right. bottom. <laughs> You think like I do, Leslie. I'm the same. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. so I, I hit that. this. I hit this moment, and I said, "Okay, you can go one of two ways. You can keep going the direction you're going, which is not working out very well for you, is it? Um, or you can decide to get healthy mentally, physically, and emotionally. And I did pick all three of those. Um, and I literally drove a stake in the ground, which is still in my flower bed, because I said, you know. I'm making this decision. I am going to get healthy mentally, physically, and emotionally. Wow. Now, at the time, the day that I made that decision, which was just like that, I had no clue what it was going to look like. Right. Zero idea. And I also tell people now that if I would have known how hard the journey was going to be, I don't know that I ever would have gone on the journey. That's but I'm incredibly grateful yeah. that I did not know because I did go on the journey and I am now living my very best life wow. that I possibly could. And I will tell you a little secret if you promise not to tell anybody else. Tell any of the thousands that are listening, but go ahead. <laughs> Just me and them, just me and them, Leslie. <laughs> but um, in August, I will be 65 years old. August what? August the 5th. Oh, I'm August 10. Oh, you're almost on one of my sister's birthday. Um, <laughs> well, you look I, way younger than 65, right? What a blessing that you lost that weight too, because you don't know if you've even would have been here. That's exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And I work out and I eat and I make better choices. Do I have bad days? Yes. Heavens to Betsy. Yes. Yeah. But the difference between a not so great day today and a not so great day um, six years ago is that I now know how to speak kindly to myself. Wow. I now know that I can sit down with pen and paper and I can say, I, I have conversations in writing to myself. I can say to myself, of course you feel that way. This is what's going on. Why wouldn't you feel that way? Right. Because truthfully, truthfully, Nina, don't we all long for one thing? And that one thing is to be heard yeah. Yeah. and to be acknowledged yeah. and not to be told you shouldn't feel that way. You shouldn't think that way. Right. 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 And that's because I think people don't know how to deal with things, right? They don't know how to deal with grief or they don't know how to deal with what you're going through. So that's their response. And they think that they're helping and they're totally not helping. Right. And I, and we would do way better off if we understood that life throws crap at you sometimes. <laughs> and it's okay to, to know that, life is going to throw crap at you. Like everything's not going to be perfect all the time. And I think that that's where we're getting a little lost sometimes in all the social media and all that stuff that's out there. Everything looks so perfect, right? And so it's giving everybody the impression that that is a happy and perfect life. And we're not realizing, okay, but you know what? Crap's going to happen. If you don't learn to live in that space for a moment and like really acknowledge it the way you did, Leslie, it, it fails you. You will fail in it, right? Because you won't, you don't know how to even manage. So that's really powerful. Like, but I mean, that must have been a, a really like, I, I'm really done moment, right? Like that moment where you're like, I am done, done. When you put that stake in the ground. What was the next step, though? Because you had no idea what to do, right? <laughs> so and I guess what I'm trying to drive to people is. Leslie didn't do this overnight. Like she had to work at this. And I think we have to stop being discouraged when we don't, you know, lose the 20 pounds in three days. Like we thought, you know, well, yeah, the media, the media and the advertisements don't yeah. do us any good. And I, right. I tell people, you know, you need your mouse print glasses to read the mouse print that says <laughs> that you have to follow That's a good. healthy diet and exercise program <laughs> right. uh, because they purposefully put that in mouse print. Yeah. So, uh, but you're right. It did not happen overnight. Right. It took me um, over 20 months to lose the weight. Right. Okay. That's realistic. Yeah. And, and people say, well, it took you so long. I thought that I was going to lose it in 12. Imagine my shock when it was right. almost 20. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I, I, I didn't read the mouse print. <laughs> right. That's hilarious. <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, looking back, um, I don't know about you, but anytime I've done something difficult, the slower I learn the process, the better I understand it and the better I'm able to continue to execute it. Does that mean I make don't make any more mistakes? No. But what it does is I understand that I can just go back a step and then I can keep moving forward. Right. Because when we learn things slowly, we learn them. Yeah. And a lot of the work that I had to do and a lot of the work that I help other people do. And you're talking about you work with CEOs and people like that who have that negative self-talk going. If you envision a, a dirt road that after it's just rained, you know, it's really muddy and slippery. But if you've been driving down that dirt road the same way every day, you've got these huge ruts and the car is almost self-driving mm -hmm. where you can kind of just fall into the ruts in that road, hit the accelerator and you're going to come out on the other end. Well, that's the way those negative self uh, thoughts start happening in our head. Mm -hmm. So let's say, for example, um, you were to drop a plate and break it. Well, the next thing that's going to happen, oh my goodness, how could I be so clumsy? And you'd be telling everybody I'm so clumsy. I dropped this plate and, you know, just perpetuate, right? Yep. So what I say is, okay, so you dropped the plate. All right. I dropped the plate. Why did I drop the plate? I dropped the plate because my hand was slippery. I wasn't really watching what I was doing. And you know what? That's okay. I dropped the plate. Accidents happen. Right. It was not an on purpose. It was an accident. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Mm -hmm. I can clean up the mess. I can move on to the next thing. Right. So we, we start driving on the other part of that muddy road, but we need to do it very, very slowly. Yeah. And yeah. as we go down that muddy road, and we're changing those thoughts and we're changing those words that we're saying to ourselves. We start saying, look at you. Wow. You didn't criticize yourself when you dropped that plate. That is so amazing. Right. right. I am so proud of you. And one of the things that I discovered fairly early was, um, I, I like I said, I thought that nobody loved me. Right. But the only person who didn't love me was me. Mm -hmm. And I accidentally fell into having conversations with myself and encouraging myself. And where that started was um, with a Valentine's Day card. I saw a Valentine's Day card. I was getting cards for everybody else. And I said, you know, it'd be really nice if somebody sent that card to me. I would really enjoy receiving it. And I walked away and I got about five steps away from the card and this thought came into my head. It said, why don't you send the card to yourself? That is so powerful. Wow. So I turned around. I got the card. I paid for all my groceries, including the card. I got home, put the cold stuff away, didn't put anything else away, sat down with a pen and started writing the Valentine's card that I would love to receive. Oh, I man. told myself how amazing I was, how incredible I was, how wonderful I was just talking to myself in the way that I wished that someone would talk to me. And what I came to realize is the person who is always with me, who will always listen to me and will not get tired of hearing the same story over and over and over again. Right. right. <laughs> is, is me. Right. Right. That is so powerful. Wow. You were saying that and it gave me chills because I think um, that's something that we a lot of people lack is love, that love for themselves and who they are created to be. I mean, we are created like we are here. We're present. We're now. Right. And we're not promised tomorrow. And if we don't love each other or love ourselves like that, Leslie, you know, we're missing out. We're missing out. Right. Because I like even when I'm working with my clients, it's like I'm only pulling out of them what's in them. That's all I'm doing. Right. They already have. And then they they're just amazed at what. Oh, Nina, you're the best coach ever. All I did was pull out of you what was already in you. Right, Leslie. And I think that, you know, with you writing and everything in your book, that's what you're doing, too. It's like you're making people kind of like look at your book almost like a mirror right? Look at yourself, see what's happening because you already have it in you. 
Now, Leslie, do you do other things as well? I know you write your books because you have a, a few books out. Do you also coach or do you do all of that as well? Or what else do you do? You do well, um, I, I do coach and I do. do okay, great. Yeah, and I do Tell help us about people. That. Tell us about well, that. Uh, what I do is a little bit different from what a lot of coaches do, because I recognize that so many people who are struggling with their weight, especially people who overeat or emotional eat or stress eat, they they're afraid to look at their emotions. Mm -hmm. So I help people just like I did learn to name the emotions. And it's not that I didn't know the names of emotions. It's that I didn't know how to name my emotions. Right. So I very gently guide people um, to looking at their life. Okay. So you, um, for example, if you're feeling sad, you go for, you know, whatever food it is that you go for. And I'll ask the question usually, okay, when, when is your first memory of going for this food? What was going on? You know, how are you feeling? Yeah. And they'll be, they'll pause and they'll say, oh, I did. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. I said, okay, so what we need to do, what we want to do is we want to go back to where, where that started. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we want to talk to that that child, because that's usually where it is, is a yeah. child. And we want to talk to that child. And what I came to understand and realize is all that stuff was me at, you know, much, much, much younger years. Yeah. And those, those things that protected me, that I thought protected me, were created way back there. And mm -hmm. until I drag them out of the closet one by one, very gently look at them and say to myself, well, of course you eat an entire thing of Oreo cookies. Uh, because, you know, look at the first time that this happened. You know, you were you were someplace where you thought you were never going to have it again. You, you know, whatever the conversation yeah. is. But let's acknowledge, you know, okay, so that's what I help people do. Is awesome. Let's go all the way back. And then I help them to start reframing. I help people to eliminate some words from their vocabulary, such as the word should mm -hmm. um, and need, need to, <laughs> you know, yeah. we don't need to do anything except pay our taxes okay. um, and start, you know, helping people to own their emotions. Yeah. And then I do tweak, do a little bit of tweaking on their um, food choices, but truthfully, most of the people, as they start working on the emotional side and start looking at the emotional side and where it's coming from, the um, call, the desire, the yearning for the food starts easing. So it's easier. It becomes easier to make better choices. I'm not going to label food healthy or unhealthy. We And we only have three choices. We have good choices, great choices, and not so good choices. No bad choices. Right, right, right. Well, because then you're then you're reinforcing the bad thing, which is what you're trying to get rid of, right? And right. so if you're calling it bad food and you eat it, now you're bad. Exactly. So, you know, and the thing is, is like, we, we don't want to, you know, as adults, we're like, no, that doesn't. Mean, yeah, it does subconsciously. That's exactly what you've been doing, right? And it, it's really uh, fascinating that you do it in that angle. And I love that because you're dealing with the real stuff. It's not like, oh, I had the Oreos. That's nothing. That's surface stuff, right? Yeah. And, and we could take away your Oreos, but later on when nobody's looking, you're going to eat those <laughs> Oreos in the closet somewhere where nobody can see you because you don't think anybody's going to notice, right? It's so funny. So let me ask you, like when you got to that 12 month part and you realized you didn't lose the hundred pounds, right? <laughs> Were you already at a state where you were okay with that? Or did, or did that kind of throw you off a little bit? You know, like having that goal and not reaching that goal. Um, I was at a place where I could reflect and realize that I had not learned all the lessons that I needed to learn to be able to be successful on the journey. Okay. And I realized that even though I hadn't arrived where I thought, wanted to arrive where I thought I should have arrived. Mm -hmm. um, I realized that I had learned a lot, but I hadn't learned enough. Okay. And I needed to practice more. 
That's so um, I was able to release the fact that, you know, the, the timetable did not line up with my timetable. Right, right. <laughs> uh, because I've seen so many people who say, well, I'm going to lose all this weight, you know, in 10 to 15 or, you know, three months. You talk about 20 pounds in three months. You, you know, oftentimes our bodies and our lives have a whole different idea. Yeah. And what I tell people especially if they've got like 50 to 100 pounds to you know that they want to lose is let's focus on the next one let's focus on the next five let's focus on you know a small tiny number yeah um because we can handle a small tiny number and for mm -hmm. people who have 10 pounds to lose i recommend that they focus on the next half pound let's mm -hmm. let's focus on something that our brain can manage because right. Let's face some facts. Our brain is lazy and it likes yeah. to be yeah. happy. And the minute it runs into a problem, it goes to whatever it knows that's yeah. going to make it happy. Right. So we might as well set up goals and little milestones that we can hit. And then what I also teach people is let's celebrate. We celebrate everything, small wins, big wins. Yeah. And we absolutely, totally, completely, utterly ignore any mess ups. Right. Ignore it. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Cause your brain is, is, is a solution finding machine. Right. Right. So if you're going to give it all of the mess ups and the, it's going to keep trying to find solutions, but if you give it the rewards, it, the endorphins go up and then you're like, you're, then it's like, it's the same as eating the cookie. Right. right. Can see that same satisfying feeling. So that's so like, so good. That's so good. I think, I think my audience, I know you guys are listening. I know you guys are going to be like, what? I know you're falling in love with Leslie at the same time I am. I get it. <laughs> Leslie, that's really great. So let me ask you, did you, was there a time during this journey? Cause you, it's a six years now. So what, is there a time where you, did you go up a little and go, uh oh, and like had to like pull yourself back down? Or was there any of that moment for you? Or has this been a really nice, steady transition in your life? Oh, I would love to lie to you and tell you that it's been really nice and steady. And I never, ever, ever worry about sliding back into those bad habits. Right. But unfortunately, Nina, the name of your podcast is Straight Talk with No right. Sugar Added. So the truth is, yes, my weight will go up and my weight will come back down to where I want it to be. Mm -hmm. um, and the same things that would set me off before can set me off again if I'm right. having a really bad day where I'm really, really struggling with, you know, whatever the emotion is. Usually it's frustration and anger and even extreme sadness. Um, you know, you you will find me, and I'm very honest about this, you will find me driving through Canes and getting a, a four-piece meal and then driving through Sonic, which is right next door, and getting five mozzarella sticks and a Route 44 Diet Coke. Because, you know, if you drink Diet Coke with anything, it <laughs> zeroes out the calories. <laughs> right, right. Right, right. Of course. Uh, and, and, you know, for people who haven't read the book, um, among the things I say in the first or second chapter are the lies that I told myself which were, you know, you eat the 18 sugar them. cookies yeah. before you get home. Um, those big fat sugar cookies with the soft icing on top. Oh, the good um, ones. In, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the ones that they make in the store, you know, yeah. that come in all colors at the holidays. Yeah. If you eat those, uh, you know, on the way home in the, in the 10, 15 minutes, it takes you to get from the grocery store to your house. And they have no calories because right. nobody saw you eat them all. And of course you dispose of everything. Right. So, right. um, <laughs> but but you see the difference between, you know, me going through Canes and through Sonic and all that then and now is now I will catch myself mm -hmm. and I will say, OK, That's what's it. really going on? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just tell me what's really going on. And I'll grab pen and paper and have that conversation with myself, because That's remember, right. I am good. always with myself. I never get tired of listening to me. <laughs> Good. That would be a problem. So <laughs> well, but how many times do you have a friend who keeps, you know, hoeing the same road right. and, and you're like, oh my gosh, I wish they'd fix this problem. And I just don't want, and you start tuning them out and you start thinking about, okay, so what am I going to have for dinner on Saturday? And then, right. you know, I need to go to the grocery store. I need to get this. And you know something, 
um, I noticed that all my socks had holes in them. So I think I'm stopped by Walmart. And in the meantime, you know, they're continuing on and on and on. Right. And, and yeah. they say, well, what do you think? And you go, uh, uh, wait, wait, L let me just think for a minute and I'll give you an answer. Right. <laughs> so funny but that's very very true and you know i love that leslie i mean you gave us so many nuggets of wisdom here i mean i love that you started to love yourself i think that is just huge right and i love the story about the the valentine's day card because i think it's something we don't do for ourselves enough honestly I, we beat ourselves up a lot that's true, you know, or we don't think we're good enough because somebody's doing something else. So we compare ourselves a lot and comparison is the thief of joy, you know, so we have to, I, I mean, I just, I love everything that you've talked about. I'm definitely going to be picking up your book. It's just, an, it's just um, awesome to meet you and have you on straight talk and dropping all this amazing wisdom that you did. So I really appreciate that you came on. Thank you so much for doing that. Oh, thank well, you. Nina, thank you so much for having me. This was super fun. So before I let you go, Leslie, I do uh, want my audience to follow you, to buy your book and support you and all of that. So where where do they go to, to find you? Well, the best, easiest way to find anything and everything about me, including the social media and the books, is to go to the website, which is youcanteatlove.com. Mm -hmm. And there's also a place if you want to reach out and if you just want to message me, there's a place where you can do that on the website as well. And yes, I will answer you because um, I've had people say, oh, you're a real person. Yes, I'm very real. I respond to every single message that there is. That's awesome. Um, and I, I love to hear from people. And if you yeah, have a question great. that I can help you with, I'm happy to answer. That's amazing. Thank you for that, Leslie. Thank you. And guys, you know, ah, this was such a good conversation, right? I mean, she kept it real. She told us how it is. I love it. Love yourself first, guys. Love yourself because that'll help you love others. It'll help you get through a lot of hard times in your life, not just with weight loss, with other issues as well. So learn to forgive, learn to love, and learn to be grateful. Learn to be grateful. So guys, thank you guys so much for being here. I love that you're here. This is Nina Perez. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, all that great stuff that we do. And un until next time, take care. This broadcast is brought to you by Winject Studios. We are an all-in-one educational platform for podcasters that revolutionizes how hosts leverage content to increase engagement with listeners, downloads, and income. We come together to focus on community, collaboration, and collective impact. For more information on how you can interact directly with our hosts, access exclusive live content with offers you can't get anywhere else from our official partners, join our purpose-driven community by visiting www.winject.com. If you're ready to build a career doing what you love, then we're ready to see you there.